We want to welcome the 1,501 house churches locally, nationally, and internationally. Let's give them a hand. Go ahead, 1,500 mark this week. Awesome. Use the video and the invitation to receive Christ. Have a discussion. Put the heart emoji on our Facebook page if you are opening a house church or already have so we can be praying for you. So 1,501 really families. Usually when they contact us, they give us photos of just a house full of people. And um, it's just kind of cool when you see that connection. And uh, so we appreciate you guys contacting us so we can be praying for you. We want to thank uh, the 1,116 people who have contacted us on Facebook in the last two weeks. It's very humbling when you have 1,116 people in a two week period thanking us for our service on Saturday night and how it blessed them. Uh, remember when you guys, we don't ever say um, the whole YouTube thing about subscribe, hit the button. The majority of our followers, over 1,600, are on Facebook. So when you see the little 400 and something on the YouTube, our big following is on Facebook, and we post that video on Facebook. So, um, um, you know, we're not trying to solicit anything on Saturday. We're just trying to be a blessing, amen? If, if there was two people subscribing, great, awesome, amen? Uh, we just want to be a blessing. We're not trying to get any attention. We appreciate your prayers and encouragement of how our Saturday night service is having an impact for Jesus in your homes. Jesus gets all the glory. We also want to welcome the two new house churches in Nigeria. So this week we had two different people from families from Nigeria contact us this week. And Nigeria is 7,000. 696 miles from Tilakwan. Um, last Saturday night's message traveled. Amen? It traveled. Um, <clears throat> so I always say it's your house, your people, and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how easy it is to minister. Your home, the people you know, and Paul said, I didn't come to you with persuasive speech or eloquence. Um, he said, I wasn't a good speaker. I didn't know everything. But he said, one thing I did know, the demonstration and the power of the Holy Spirit. So we want all of you all over the world. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to empower you. Um, you don't have to have an education. You don't have to have a degree. All you have to have is the Holy Spirit and surrender and say, Holy Spirit, I want to touch people. And um, that's all you need. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> also, new house churches in Nepal. People contact us from Nepal this week. Also from India um, and multiple house churches in the last three weeks have opened in Malawi, M-A-L-A-W-I. I had to find out where that was because we'd had people contacting us, but it's in Africa, it's a country in Africa, and it's surrounded by Zambia and Tanzania and Mozambique. Walk that little country in between them. But we've probably in the last two weeks had six house churches open in that little country. So um, you guys are rocking and shocking, man. Amen? We also have seen house churches open in Zambia, Tanzania, and Mozambique in the last four years. So isn't it interesting? We have house churches all around that little country. But the last few weeks, boom, um, they got surrounded. Amen. <clears throat> so open in those countries in the last four years. January 1st will be four years in Chiliquin, reaching the world for Jesus. Um, last Saturday night service, 
there was a lady sitting in the foyer. I couldn't even see her. I didn't know she was sitting out in the foyer. Um, she prayed the prayer to receive Christ out in the foyer. And after the service was over, I was standing over here by the Lamb's Book of Life. She walked up to me and said, hey, I prayed the prayer out in the foyer. I need to sign in the Lamb's Book of Life. I thought, wow, you ain't have to be sitting in here, man. You just have to be in the building, amen? So that was, that was awesome. Um, the good news of the gospel permeated the entrance of the building. So just know, even though people are sitting out there and we can't see them, they can hear pretty good through that little tunnel that goes back there. Amen? Um, so we've been talking uh, for the last six, uh, few weeks about spiritual warfare. We learned that these principalities and powers of the air are actually fallen angels. And uh, so tonight we're going to talk about spiritual heart protection. Um, in the times we're living in, boy, you have to protect your heart. Yep. You, there, there's a lot going on. There's a lot being said. And you really got to, and we're going to teach you how to do that tonight. But, um, so we're going to be talking about spiritual heart protection. So we're just going to look at Ephesians 6.14. So all of our house churches all over the world, we referenced this last week when we talked about truth, um, but it's in the same verse. So Ephesians 6.14 um, <clears throat> Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. So we're really going to talk about you, you got to protect your heart. Um, as I was praying all week about this message, the Holy Spirit showed me Many of us have sustained heart injuries. Now, as we're ministering to people in the end times, chance, they've already sustained a heart injury. You know what I'm talking about? Gotcha. So we've really got to be sensitive that we're getting people all pumped up, Deb, about armor, but boy, those heart injuries really need to be addressed. Because you can put all this armor on, but your heart is broken. So we got to start first, Dan, with allowing Jesus to bring healing to the heart. Um, it doesn't mean you can't put armor on with heart injuries. But usually you won't be confident in fighting the good fight of faith because somebody will say something to you and that injury in your heart underneath your breastplate will just cripple you. Have you ever been somewhere and heard a sound that reminded you of an injury? Have you ever been somewhere and smelled a smell or some, you know, different people, different things but definitely you've heard somebody say something that has injured you before. Amen? Now, for a lot of people that have never been in war like Vietnam, well, I've, I'm not injured by a sound. Well, if you've been in a gunfight where people around you died, just the sound of gunfire brings back that injury. If you've been in a gunfight where you smell the smell of gunpowder and injury, blood, it, it brings back that injury. So that's sound, smell, verbal. Amen? <clears throat> Many of you have sustained heart injuries from relationships, I mean, you can be five years old and sustain an injury from a relationship. Um, 
You've sustained an injury from rejection. You've sustained a heart injury from abandonment. You've sustained a heart injury from words spoken to us that injured us and left a wound that Jesus needs to heal before we put on the breastplate. So a lot of times over the years, as we're teaching people, as we're ministering to people chants, we get all pumped up about the armor, but restoration did not come first to the heart, the lungs, the vital organs. That's what that, they've sustained an injury. You know, I was writing this message today, it's like, whoa, this thing's going completely different than what I thought. But the Lord has said, Randy, the body of Christ has sustained injuries prior to being saved. They've sustained injuries after being saved. So, Tony, when we try to strap on righteousness to protect ourselves from being injured, we haven't been healed from the previous injuries. You know what I'm talking about? All right, okay. So we're going to talk about first, because there's going to be thousands of people all over the world, hundreds, that they want to put the armor on, but man, there's this major wound that they would actually cover up that's still bleeding and they're trying to fight. So we're going to help a bunch of people tonight get some healing, and then when they strap on the breastplate, might have a scar. Right? Yeah. We've all got scars. Um, so take a moment right now to place your hand on your heart. So we're just going to do that here. Those of you in house churches, uh, put your hand over your heart. Place your hand on your heart and allow Jesus to heal your heart from your past so you can be confident in your future. Lord, we just come before you and we place our hand on our heart as just a, a step of faith. Lord, we place our hands on our heart. Lord, only you know all the issues in our hearts. Only you know all the injuries, maybe even some that we've forgotten about and suppressed. But Lord, we need that healing hand on our heart tonight as we go forward to place our breastplate of righteousness. We don't want to put it over an injured heart, an injured lungs, an injured intestines, Lord, our, our vital organs. Lord, we just, by faith, pray that a, a powerful healing would start in this building, in us tonight, and as this service goes all around the world, as people all over the world are placing their hands on their hearts and their homes, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, restoration would come. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we prayed that prayer, but let's speak some scripture to heal that wound. So we're going to go to Psalms, because David, man, he... The Bible said he had a heart after God, but he also had sustained some injuries in his heart. Good to see you tonight, Freddie. Um, so, as we go to Psalms, let's look at Psalms 51, verse 10 through 13, and we really need to go, okay, God, before I can put my, we're talking about the armor of God tonight, Freddie, and what we were talking about is people have sustained wounds in their hearts from verbal abuse, from relationships, from abandonment. So we're in church trying to say, hey, put on your armor, but they've got this big wound in their heart. So tonight we're going to start off by helping people. We need to address that heart injury. So this is a great psalm by David. 
Psalms 51, and we're going to read 10 through 13. So Psalms 51, 10 through 13, is some great advice from David because he was dealing with some major issues in his heart. Some things that he had done and um, he was hurting. He felt separated from God because of that injury. So let's see what he tells us tonight. And this is what David said. Uh, Psalms 51, 10. Create in me a pure heart, O God. So as we talk about righteousness, this is going to help you because we don't have a righteousness of our own, Patty. But the only way we can ask God to create in me a pure heart, O God, is to know our righteousness is in Him. Right. So tonight... When you guys get home and maybe you revert, review some of the injuries in your heart, this is a good prayer to pray. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Now, this is a person that sustained an injury after he already knew God, after he'd already followed God. So you can sustain heart injuries. How many have went through a bad relationship before you were saved or recommitted? Yeah. Or you had a bad relationship with your mom or you had a bad relationship with your dad, or you didn't have a dad, or you didn't have a mom, and that created this void in your heart. And that can taint our heart for our whole lives, mm -hmm. even as after we get saved. So David's going, create in me a pure heart. Verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Verse 13, then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. See how powerful it is when your heart gets healed? You're gonna be able to help somebody else. You're gonna say, dude, I was wounded just like that. Well, why are you so happy now? Why are you so positive? Why do you have so much love? Well, I ask the Lord to create in me a pure heart. Restoration comes when joy, which means contentment, fills your heart. See, a lot of times when we sustain a heart injury, it's because someone injured us and they left us behind. And when we have that kind of injury, we're never content. We're, we're constantly looking for another person to fill that void. No person can fill a void when your heart has been hurt. That doesn't mean you can't love again. But if that doesn't get healed, Chance, you'll always be apprehensive do they really love me? Are they going to leave me? Amen. Leonard? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. It's very, very quiet in here. Mm -hmm. They're listening. <laughs> Result, you begin to want to help others receive healing and help them get their armor on for future protection. So I need to tonight, this time I have with Chance, give him some tools simply, and he goes, I got it, Randy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give that wound or wounds to God, and then I'm gonna put my protection on. Because if I can disciple Chance and build him strong, the next time, 
that wounding tries to come, he's going to go, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Amen. Been there, starred in the movie, bought the t-shirt, bought the CD. Chad's going to go, I, I've been in that rodeo. He goes, but I was in church this week. And Jesus healed my heart. And the person's going to go, how, Chance? He goes, well, it's on YouTube. Let's watch the service. <laughs> you were in that, sir? Yep, Randy will be talking to me the whole time. <laughs> Chance, can you imagine somebody sitting in your house this week? And you just, well, let's turn on YouTube. Let, let's see if it helps you. And Chance just opened the house church in Lakeview. Amen. That's how quick it happens. Freddie, he's here tonight. And all of a sudden, God just walked somebody into his life this week, just tore up from the floor up. And Freddie goes, hey, you got some time later today? Yeah, but I'm hurting. Hey, let's watch this video on YouTube. See if it helps you. Amen? Amen. It, it's that easy. Amen. So, so we want to help others receive healing to help them get their armor on for future protection. Many have placed armor on and over a broken heart. You see how vulnerable that makes us? When all of a sudden we're trying to put spiritual armor on an injured heart. Like I said, this message is going completely. I've taught on the armor for over 33 years. And this new book that I'm writing about this, whole different perspective, amen? God allow God to, inj to uh, heal the injury. Let's help people be healed emotionally through discipleship and build warriors who finish strong. Randy, where does righteousness come from? Great question. I'm glad you guys asked. So let's look at a couple of verses to secure our knowledge of righteousness. So now chance, wow, David prayed a pretty hardcore, sang a song. Now chance needs to know a couple of verses of why he's righteous. That's very helpful. Because man, Satan comes and just slathers all kinds of garbage on us and goes, you messed up five minutes ago. I know, I ask the Lord forgiveness, but my righteousness is not in my performance. It's in my faith in who makes me righteous. Let's back that up with some scripture, amen? All right, Philippians 3, 9. One thing you'll find if you read any of my books, um, I might make a little statement, but boy, there's scripture right after it. And it's the same way I teach and preach. Um, so Philippians 3, 9, this is a good one to know. And all you house church uh, servants, leaders, these are some great scriptures to help people get healed and walk in that healing. So Philippians 3, 9. So in Philippians 3, 9, Now remember, I'm going to pull a scripture out. You guys need to tear it apart in a house church. I'm going to give you a little flake. Find somebody this week and study the other verses around it. Amen. Amen. Philippians 3, 9. And be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. So how can I look at chance and know that he is the righteousness of God? Because I've watched him receive Christ. I've watched him sign into the Lamb's book of life. So I've watched him put his faith in Christ. So now when I look at chance, he's righteous. Dude, you're righteous. You know what I'm saying? Now, when he leaves this place tonight and drives back to Lakeview, 
boy, the next time that fallen angel or demonic spirit comes, it's going to be a bad dude. Because he's going to remember, Randy told me what the Bible said about me. Next time it pounces on Freddy on a Sunday, kicking him in the ground, stomping a hole in the middle of it. He got, uh-uh. I went to church on Saturday and heard what Philippians said about me. Amen. This is good stuff, man. Not because I'm saying it. Because the Bible. You want another one? Amen. Amen. All right, we'll give you another one. So let's go to 2 Corinthians. This, this is some more stuff to let you know your righteousness is in Christ. Amen? Amen. As long as you're quick to repent, Lord, I'm sorry. I messed up. And that's why David, the Bible said, had a heart after God. Because whenever he messed up, he repented quick. And boy, he messed up good a couple of times. Amen? And so have we. So 2 Corinthians 5.21. So here's another one. 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him, not 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Freddie, one of the definitions of righteousness is right standing with God. God. So because of Jesus healing our hearts, saving our souls, Satan does not want you to know these verses. Because you are the most dangerous people on this planet to darkness. I want to make you dangerous. I want to make you, when you go to bed at night, Satan goes, Thank God Tony's asleep. And I want to make Tony so dangerous that when he wakes up in the morning, the principalities that are trying to attack him go, oh no, he's awake. We're going to get our butts kicked again today. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? That's who you are. That's who you are. Demons are going to be going, praise God, Judy went to bed. That's right. We get a time out. <laughs> and then when you wake up in the morning, I'm back. <laughs> See, when you wake up in the morning, you're the one that's going to set the tempo. Not something that tried to oppress you while you slept. Amen? Amen. Is this helping yeah. anybody? Amen. Yeah. All right. So, I wrote here in my notes, attend or start a house church and study the surrounding scriptures. Wednesday night, this place will be packed out with people tearing this message apart. That's what Wednesday night house church at this building is for. Randy can't sit here and give you every single detail. You need to take it, find a person, Show the video at your house and then talk about it. Amen? Amen. Attend or start a house church and study the surrounding scriptures. Saturday night is a flake of a bale of hay. Now, I grew up on a farm. And my grandpa would say, Randy, give them a flake. Or Randy, when you feed these cows... Give them two flakes. You know, if he, if you didn't give them the whole bale. All I'm giving you tonight is a flake. It's something for you to eat on while you're here, but you this week need to find some people or one other person and say, you know what? I need to study this a little deeper with one other person. Amen? Amen. So let me go back here. I got a little preachy there. Didn't you hear how loud I got? Uh -huh. Attend or start a house church and study the surrounding scriptures. 
Saturday night is a flake of the bale of hay. The house churches break down the bale of hay. Randy, how does this breastplate keep me focused in battle? I guarantee you this week you're going to have some kind of battle. It might not be you personally, but it could be somebody you know. It could be a friend of yours. You know, Freddie could walk into the store and all of a sudden see some people arguing with each other or somebody frustrated or somebody crying. Um, Randy, how does this breastplate keep me focused in the battle? Is that, that's a good question, isn't it? Would you like to know the answer? Yes. It's in the Bible, Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33, and these are some of the chapters that are going to be in one of my new books. So I'm excited because we're going to write all this stuff and put it in a book called Warriors of Light. So then in the future, you guys can say, hey, I heard this message, but three books before that have to be edited, so it'll be a while. Amen? So Matthew 6.33. This is a great verse, Randy. How does this breastplate keep me focused in the battle? So Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. When we have our armor on and restoration has happened emotionally, you know, when you have an injured heart, what does it affect? Your emotions. You got to be so careful in the end times to always <clears throat> respond. Don't react. Because once you become reactionary, it's easy for the enemy to get you angry, to get you emotional. But if you'll step back a little bit, and say, you know what? I'm going to give myself 30 seconds to respond to this. Amen? Yeah. Take a little time out. So when we have our armor on and restoration has happened emotionally, we seek or desire. The word says seek first the kingdom. When all of a sudden Freddie is seeking something, that word means desire. Isn't that a more powerful word? The word seek when Dan is seeking something, but boy, when Dan desires something. When you desire something, it's always on your mind. What's that supposed to be? The kingdom and his righteousness. Boy, when chance gets into that arena, Satan's going to be going bonkers and say, do not let him ever go to Chilliquin again. <laughs> I don't care if Sam drives and picks him up. You do not let Chance in that service again. We are getting beat ugly from him sitting in that building. Isn't that fun? I guarantee you, Chance is going to have a testimony in the next seven days. Of using this. I guarantee, like Louisiana hot sauce, I guarantee. Amen? Man, I'm all over the place. All right. So when we desire to put Jesus first and reach people so they can be healed, and then we show them how to armor up to protect their healing and how to reach others. This is why it is vital for you to study these scriptures with others during the week. When you study the word with others, God's protection through his righteousness shines a light spiritually on your heart. So when all of a sudden we make time to study the word, it shines a light on our hearts. Amen. I'm going to back that up with scripture. It shines a light on our heart, spiritually on your heart, which brings purification, which allows you to see God's direction for your lifetime. 
purification through righteousness allows you to see what God needs you to do. You want to see that in Scripture? Sure. All right. Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 8. This is a good one, too. They're all good, but chance is just going to be... Brandy, why do you always talk to the visitors so much? Because he's from Lakeview. He's special. He's my little brother from Lakeview. i got to pump him up before he goes home. Amen? All right. <laughs> and he can handle it. He's been here before. Oh, you're going to like this. Remember when I said purification? And then David said, create in me a clearing heart? Listen to this. Little bitty verse, Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Wow. Now remember, the Bible says men's hearts are desperately wicked. See, we look at our hearts and go, come on, Rand, how can my heart be pure? Tony, how can you and me, with the mileage we put on our bodies and the stuff we know, come on, dude. Come on, Randy, how can I have it? It says right here. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So man, when you walk in righteousness, Dan, and Leonard, you allow that purification to come, and then all of a sudden, Sam, you say, I'm blessed, and now what do you see? God. You are a walking weapon, man. I walked up to a young lady in Walmart I was leaving Walmart and the Lord said she was running the check cashing line. Have you guys ever seen that check cashing line at Walmart? There must have been 60 people. And the Lord goes, Randy, I want you to walk over to her and tell her how special she is. Hmm. Freddie, I don't know if you've seen that check cashing line at Walmart like on the first. I walked over and I said, the Lord just wants you to know how special you are. It wiped her out, man. I thought those 60 people were gonna kill me because she, she completely just broke down and started bawling and says, you don't know how much I needed that today. See, we've gotta be so careful because we go from point A to point B. But you're a warrior of light. What, what did I do? That was extremely violent. It's very violent to love the unlovely. Amen. But it made her day. But oh, I got to go here. I got to do this. A word in season. Yes. Find, one, find another person, open house church. Use these verses as a guideline and watch the Holy Spirit give you revelation of how powerful you are in the righteousness of God. You are one of God's best for your location. You will finish strong that is our prayer for you to finish strong until Jesus comes. We need to realize as warriors of light, when we strap on that breastplate of righteousness to protect our vital organs, and then when you start witnessing to people and sharing the love of Jesus, this is going to be one of the main things you're going to need to help them do is get their heart healed. Because you're going to go, armor, man, we're warriors of light, this, that, and the other. But chance, they can't put that armor on over a broken heart. Because even after they get saved, Tony, 
we're going to need to help love on them to bring that restoration. And it can happen in a day. It can happen in an hour. But in the end times, when we're helping people get saved, we need to love them enough to say, let's pray over your injuries before I teach you about the armor. Okay? Awesome. Praise God. Did you learn something? <coughs> Excellent. So we're going to pray with these online. We're going to pray this prayer here in the building. But really, if you're watching this by yourself this week, locally, nationally, internationally, find somebody that needs healing in their heart <coughs> Because we don't want them to keep getting injured. Mm -hmm. We want them to get healed and then put that breastplate of righteousness on so they can protect their heart. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pray a prayer with you um, all over the world right now to receive Christ. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, isn't it amazing? Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. There's that heart issue. So we can pray to receive Christ, but boy, look at some of these verses so you can get your heart healed and walk in Christ's righteousness. Amen? So let's pray this prayer together. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I believe that you hung on a heart. Man, I got, I got the heart... It's in me, man. Let's start over. Reverse. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I believe, I believe that you hung on a cross, that you hung on a cross and died and died and paid for my sins. And paid for my sins. Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe that you rose again. That you rose again. On the third day. On the third day. Jesus, Jesus, I ask you. I ask you into my heart. Into my heart. As my Lord. As my Lord. And Savior. And Savior. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. So put the heart emoji on our Facebook page if you're opening a house church or you already have. We really want to be praying for you. So we thank for over 1,100 of you contacting us too, praying for us. Use the video and the invitation to receive Christ. Have a discussion. It's that easy. I really, really encourage you this week, find at least one other person. Go to their house or have them come to your house. Watch this message. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you guys revelation. Amen. Love you. See you next week. Awesome.